coming up on Lights, Camera, Acker, we have an exclusive interview with comedian Chris D'Elia, who made an appearance on campus last week. And speaking of our campus, check out our newly renovated Zook Hall, where Cortez Grayson gives us an inside look. Plus, we feature two UA students who took part in recent protests on campus. All of that and more on this episode of Lights, Camera, Akron. Jay Marshall here alongside my co-host Matt Barnhart and welcome to Lights, Camera, Adrian. So fall is here and Halloween is right around the corner. I still have no clue what I want to be. You, can you give me any ideas? Yeah. You know what you're going to be? I like watching animes and everything like that, so I'm going to go as an Attack on Titan Scout Ranger. Okay. And thankfully the weather is holding up. It, ne it needs to be warm. Yeah, it's definitely been holding up, but it's probably going to get cold here. It's changing a little bit. Yeah, you know what else has been changing? Our neighbors over at Zook Hall introduced their brand new building with an open house event this past weekend. Cortez Grayson was there to give us an inside look. What's up everybody? We're here at the newly renovated Zook Hall, home of the LeBron James Family Foundation. The new Zook Hall has many features including meeting rooms, learning labs, and much more. So come take an inside look at the brand new Zook Hall. One of the professors in Zook Hall is Dr. Gary Holliday, an assistant professor of science education at the University of Akron. He primarily focuses his research on the learning of science and to make a difference for students from kindergarten to 12th grade. We're here with Dr. Holliday. Can you explain what this room is about? Um, welcome. This is the science lab. Uh, basically, we have several stations here. Um, over here, we have a 3D printer. Um, and basically, we have some software uh, and it's printing out a little Pikachu. Um, it takes about an hour. Uh, to print. Um, over here at this station, we have um, a course set up for the first LEGO League uh, robotics tournament. Students from kindergarten all the way up to uh, 12th grade okay. are working in teams. Um, they have coaches, they have to develop uh, robots essentially that allow them to maneuver this course and they have to move things, they have to push buttons, they have to get the robot to move around using light sensors, tactile sensors. Um, so it's a pretty wonderful experience for students. Another professor in the building is Dr. Lynn Pagnowski, who currently teaches mathematics courses. She has been teaching at the University of Akron since 1993, and her main goal is to help students conquer their fear of math. We're here with Lynn at the math lab. Can you tell us what it's about? Sure, this is the classroom where those people who are studying to become math and um, teachers for grades, you know, kindergarten through 12th grade can come here and uh, learn how to use the right materials to be able to help students better discover for themselves uh, math relationships to be able to figure out, uh, you know, find out ways to, of teaching those those ideas. Well, this is the smart board and so you could see we could use this to, to use some um, uh, materials from the web, some applets in order to show some interactivity, and this happens to be uh, showing the growth of Facebook. It's great to have our, uh, our graduates here at the University of Akron who are going to teach math be ready to walk into a classroom and to be able to step right up and use these type of technologies that are in the Akron Public Schools and schools all over Summit County in Northeast Ohio. The Dean of the College of Education is Dr. Susan D. Clark, who oversees all faculty of the University of Akron. Uh, so basically, what is your job? Like, what do you do exactly? Well, as the Dean of the College, I am responsible for faculty, staff, and our contract professionals. We run the college. So what that means is that we schedule classes, we make sure our student services are in place and that our students are served when they have needs. I work with the president's office, with budgeting, with other uh, offices on campus to ensure that the college runs every day, that we have people here to manage it and that our students are taken care of. The new Zook Hall is open to any student and classes are offered there from elementary to college level courses. The building is filled with technology and has mentoring programs to help students succeed beyond the classroom. This has been Cortez Grayson, Lights, Camera, Akron. This is just another great program that the okay. University of Akron is putting together and it goes from K to 12 and beyond. I heard LeBron James is taking classes here at the University of Akron, so maybe he'll be in the call to take some of those classes. Yeah, I'd take a class with LeBron. I totally would too. 
We're going to take our first commercial break, but when LCA returns, we hit the entertainment scene as Brooke McKivergan gives us an exclusive interview with the comedian Chris D'Elia. And we check out the latest 909 where Demir Epperson caught up with two up-and-coming entertainers. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Vic Fleischer in Archival Services in the Polsky Building. You're watching Lights, Camera, Akron on ZTV. You may have seen him on Snapchat, Vine, Netflix, or even NBC, where he stars on shows Undateable and Whitney. Chris D'Elia is the real deal, and the University of Akron was fortunate enough to host one of his stand-up shows during Homecoming. Brooke McKivergan gives us an exclusive backstage interview with the comedic star. Comedian Charlie Chaplin once said that a day without laughter is a day wasted. If this is true, then any day spent with comedian and actor Chris D'Elia is never a day wasted. I had the pleasure of speaking with him after his show here on campus at EJ Thomas Hall. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Lights, right. camera, Akron is cute. That's a cute little <laughs> thing you do there. It's cute. Yep, that's um, right. <laughs> How was your show? How'd you do? It was fun. Yeah? It, yeah, uh, those students were really fun. Uh, and... Uh, they uh, they were good sports. I made fun of a lot of them, and they seemed to like it. So <laughs> that's right. That's what college kids are for. Sure. Yeah. I guess um, so. What do you think of the university? I heard you say you think it looks like the '80s. Be honest. Well, the the <laughs> auditorium does a little bit because yeah. of how gold and brown it is, but uh, it's serviceable. And uh, I didn't walk around the campus or anything, yeah. but uh, I, the kids seem great. So yeah, I feel it's probably like a nice place to go who... to go here, really love it here. Everyone was really excited to have you, so. Oh, cool, yeah. that's nice to know. It's really nice that you came. Um, and you're shooting in Cleveland right I now? I am, I'm, I'm shooting a movie right now, yeah. That's I awesome. was shooting Bath, in Bath and in uh, in Cleveland also as well. Okay, what are you shooting, a Netflix uh, yeah, special? Yeah, it's a Netflix movie called Little Evil, and uh, it's a movie, it's a comedy, so it'll be out next year sometime. That's really exciting. Yeah. And you're on tour right now, right? I am, yeah. I'm, I don't even know where I am half the time, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to New Orleans soon. I am, I'm going on Thursday, and uh, New Orleans, Dallas, San Antonio, those are the ones that are coming up soon. When you started, you said that you started stand-up, and you were, I saw one of your skits and yeah. you said that you started stand up in like run down bars yeah and no one was listening to you yeah nobody would listen um. <laughs> it's kind of like now <laughs> so do you have any advice for anyone who is just starting a yeah you gotta yeah you gotta play those those hard gigs yeah. and and make sure that you do tough rooms where no one is listening and try to win them over because that's how you get good right even if open mics and, okay. and all that stuff and even if they, even if you fail and bomb, that's part of it. Right. You know, that's the scariest part. But then once you do it, you know, once you bomb, you know what that feels like. And then you're not scared of the unknown, you know? Right. You can only go up from there. Sure. Yeah. That's well, you can nice. also go back down there, but, <laughs> okay, but hopefully you get we'll better and better. Yeah. Yeah. For the stuff that you get for your show, is it things that happen to you? Most. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly. Okay. I mean, unless I'm just making fun of something silly that right. I've noticed. But yeah, mostly stuff that happened to me. Yeah. And you just find a way to make fun of it. Make yeah. If I think it's funny when it happens, then I know I can make, I can kind of finesse it in a way that, or I tell it it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. What is the worst thing you've been to on tour, worst college campus? I, I don't remember them. When I leave, I forget them. Like, I will forget this one. No offense, <laughs> but I don't remember. I have like places in my head where I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that gig, but I don't remember where it is. I don't really, I don't know. I don't really, I don't know that yeah. one. Um, do you have anything you want to say that you saw out there? Uh, do, you know, follow the rules or whatever, but also not too much. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Because then it's just boring. And also, you know, break some rules and don't and listen to your parents a lot but not everything they say because you're your own person that's good put that on a t-shirt this has been brooke mckivergan for lights camera akron now i've never seen him but he was so funny and afterwards he even met up with the students that had a little bit of a meet and greet so he got to actually interact with them that's really cool yeah. i remember watching him on the uh, nbc show uh whitney Really great comedic really? timing on the show. Yeah, he was a really funny guy. I guess I should have watched that. Okay, now before our last commercial break, we mentioned two up-and-coming entertainers. Both made appearances on NBC's America's Got Talent and both performed on campus this past week. Demira Epperson has the story. I had an opportunity to attend RHPB's event where they hosted Adam Grabowski and Eric Dittleman. Though I didn't get my mind read, I did get a lot of information on how they started their successful careers. 
So how do you come up with content as a comedian that is original and funny? Like, I've always wondered that how people don't come up with the same jokes and... You gotta pay attention to what else is out there, but I think if you have a real perspective on things that might add to it. I mean, I'm sure there's some other jokes that people create that are similar to mine, but not exactly. I don't know. Just be aware of what's out there. So when you first started, um, when you first started out, where were you performing um, as just your start, getting your first start? Sure, yeah, I did, uh, well, I started doing magic even at a young age, like uh, fifth grade even, maybe. Uh, and just kind of performing for friends, and anyone who'd watch me, my parents were big, you know, supporters, and would always watch a new trick I learned. Uh, but I guess professionally, you know, you, you, I did a couple birthday parties, I knew I didn't want to be like a birthday party entertainer, <laughs> uh, but it was really when I, I hit my stride when I started doing like comedy clubs, and I, you know, go to open mics and would work on material there, and I started producing my own shows uh, just uh, you know you need those 10,000 hours to perfect your act you know kind of that Malcolm Gladwell idea uh, just to get really good so I created spaces for me to practice and get better and better and uh, you know I'd perform at colleges and then my big break uh, came when I was on TV for America's Got Talent. Speaking of America's Got sure. Talent, <laughs> how did America's Got Talent come about? Sure, literally I auditioned just on a whim. There was a small casting call where I was living in, uh, near Boston and uh, <laughs> I didn't even tell anyone that I was going out for it. It's just like, I'll try this, we'll see what it's like and nothing will come of it. <laughs> and then uh, next thing I know, I'm you know being featured on the previews and do the whole first round. And then I was just happy to get a, you know, a TV clip to help my career and then it just kept escalating. So I was totally fine when I got eliminated. I mean, it was a really strong season. I made it to the semifinals, which was really strong for that year. Uh, so, you know, it was all just a thrill for me every step of the way, and I was just happy to be there. The two entertainers are actually good friends, so hopefully they will be back at the University of Akron next year. This has been Demir Epperson for Lights, Camera, Akron. Just another cool package our team has it done. Was. And I know that uh, Demir wanted to have that mind reader read his mind without being like, can you read my mind? Really? Yeah. So. That's really cool. Both of him and the comedian, they're both so cool. So, yeah. All right, everyone, we're going to take a quick commercial break. But when LCA comes back, we take a trip downtown to feature Akron's most underrated sports teams. And this week's Hidden Gems. We'll be right back. All right, I'm Tyler Reed. I'm from Hammock City. You are watching Lights, Camera, Akron, only on ZTV. Welcome back, everyone, to Lights, Camera, Akron. Now, before we unveil this week's hidden gem, let's send it to the newsroom where Maddie Watkins has this week's headlines. Maddie, what do you got for us? Thanks, guys. One of UA's police officers recently graduated from the prestigious FBI National Academy, known for its academic excellence. Lieutenant Jim Gilbride was invited to participate at the Academy through a nomination process. Less than one half of 1% of law enforcement officers in the country are nominated and selected to attend. He is the fifth member of the University of Akron's Police Department to graduate from the National Academy. Looking forward to election night? Students here from DTV are hosting an election special night on November 8th. You can catch coverage of presidential, state, city, and congressional elections throughout the night. You will be the first to hear breaking news if you tune in to channel 45-1 on election night. That'll do it for this week's headlines. Be sure to tune in to Lights, Camera, Akron for updates on news and accomplishments here at the University of Akron. Matt and Jay, back to you guys. Thanks, Maddie. When people mention sports teams in the city of Akron, you may hear about the Rubber Ducks or the Racers, but the Rubber City Roller Girls have been generating some buzz in the recent years. Katie Bowman takes a trip to downtown Akron to visit the team in this week's Hidden Gym. The Rubber City Roller Girls are a hardcore roller derby team part of the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. I got the chance to talk with two members of the Roller City Derby Girls, Kiwi KO and Valkyrie. Okay, so can you guys just basically tell me a little bit about the Val and what it is? I don't really know that. Like how roller derby works? Yeah. All right, so you have a team of four, let's say, red. 
white and a team of four black. And then each team has a jammer, which is the girl with the star on her helmet. So you're trying to help your jammer through and stop their jammer at the same time. Okay. She's, every lap she makes after her first lap, she's getting points for it. Oh, so it's like a point system. Yep. So how do you win? Having those points. Okay. <laughs> so, at the end of the game. Okay, so is it like a clock time kind of thing? Um, it's called a jam, each like little round we uh -huh. play. And so you would go out for no more than two minutes. But if I get through first, and maybe I'm considered lead jammer then, right. I can call it off, which is when I tap my hips. Okay. And then the jam stops. So it could be 30 second jam, it could be a two minute jam, but no more than two minutes. Okay. Yeah. So the whole thing yeah. is basically keeping the jammer back. Yes. So you wanna, okay. your, your first priority is always keep like that bra behind you. Out. Yes, so you can yeah. slow her down, you can knock her out, you can take her back if you knock her out. So if I'm right here, she can throw her shoulder back. It's called a can opener. You can imagine why. Do it again. Do it like mean it. Oh. Oh, see, right there. So she can do that, or she can use her butt. That's my specialty. <laughs> oh. See, I'm not letting her by. You have what? Wrist, elbow, mouth guards, which I don't have in right now. Okay, so you guys uh, wear mouth guards? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And your helmet, um, you can wear extra things. Some girls wear padded shorts uh -huh. um, that has like tailbone <laughs> protection. <laughs> Me! Because a lot of times when you fall, you go like this. And then you fall <laughs> okay, on your butt. Right on your butt. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, um, yeah, or if you're on the receiving end of a crowd pleaser, then you might end up on your rear. So right. um, there's extra padding you can wear, but what you see on us minus the mouth guard is the minimum. Okay, so like that's required. Yep. For it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what makes you guys want to do roller derby? I watched her. Oh, <laughs> stop it. No, seriously, I came I came to about with my family and I saw it and I could follow the rules and I thought these women are amazing and this looks like something that I can do. Um, so I okay. went and got info and then they put out a recruiting post on Facebook and I looked at my spouse and I was like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> and he was like, do it, you can do this. And here you are. Here I am. I just want to ask you guys about, you know, the negative stereotypes that some people have against roller derby. I'll throw it out there. Um, I went to high school with a girl and she did roller derby in another state. Um, and I talked to her about it a few years ago. And I'm, How did you get into it? This yeah. is so cool. And she told me horror stories about their initiations and how negative and nasty and mean and they beat them down. So I went into this as a pledge thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to pay my dues. They're going to kick my butt. This is going to be gonna horrible. Hate you. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be haste. Man, these women opened open arms welcomed me in like I was one of them the first night um and I don't know if that was just me I just fit in and found my people because yeah. that's kind of what I feel like right um but I was scared going into it I had like this preconception that oh no they're they're this cool club and I have to be a cool kid no I was welcomed in right away immediately like I don't think we're nearly as scary as we look yeah. I don't know. We all have day jobs. We have lawyers. We have hairdressers. We have stay-at-home moms. I work retail. Like everybody has life outside of Derby, but Derby kind of becomes your life. But these people are my family, and I probably never would have met them otherwise. Like we are just an odd collection of variety, but we must have like a common denominator of inner crazy that makes us want to hit other people. Um, but drink it's the Kool-Aid. Yes, we drank the Kool-Aid, and now we want to hit other people. But I mean, the best part of like practice is like the sisterhood and just the, I don't know. These are my family. This has been Katie Bowman from Lights, Camera, Akron. Katie did such an amazing job, and I just want to get out there with those girls. They look so cool. Oh, and tough. And I mean, yeah. with all of your boxing training and everything, are you going to become one of their jammers? I'm going to be a jammer, so. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we return, we share a powerful story with the recent protests on campus. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Brian O'Donnell, the writer and co-director of Akron the Film. And you're watching Lights, Camera, Akron, only on ZTV. There have been several protests in professional sports that grabbed America's attention, but none like the recent protests of sitting during the national anthem. It started with NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick, then it spread to other pro athletes, sports teams, and even here at the University of Akron. I got to speak with two UA students who partook in the silent protest by sitting during the national anthem. Two UA students, one from Black Excellence Commission, Angel Poole, and the other from Student African American Brotherhood, Eli Jordan, explained why they participated in the protest of kneeling during the national anthem at the University of Akron's homecoming game. 
And it was originally just supposed to be, you know, just to help promote the issue with police brutality. Okay. So while this is a rising issue, it has some, it's something that's always been around, but to shine more light on why this is something that affects us as a whole, whether you're walking down the street in an inner city neighborhood, whether you're walking down the street in a suburban neighborhood, or walking on your campus. So right. I think that it's important that, you know, we as black students, as students of color, understand that this is something that we need to educate ourselves more on so that we can make a difference. Because, you know, education is, is a must right. on whatever topic that you're um, focusing on. So it was just our stand in, you know, promoting this is an issue. So. so like, it was very important. So why now? Like, why at that game? So pretty much became the idea that a lot of people would be at that game. Like a lot of higher ups, the provosts would be there and so forth. And we wanted them to see that we are we can unite as one. We can come together for a cause. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, we chose that time, that event. And it was a good time because we had people from chanting behind us saying, USA, like they're forcing us to say, stand up. They were just yelling at us. I was about to say, like what, who really kind of opposed this whole thing? Were there people who like really were against this? Yeah, so against this, like, the um, university itself though wasn't. So okay. the higher ups, the administrators, the president, no one ever really made it out to be a problem because at the end of the day, this is our freedom of speech to make right. whatever decision that we're making as students. Um, but there were members, um, you know, there were people in the crowd that, you know, said their, you know, their spill on things. But at the end of the day, I think that we chose that game because it was the homecoming game. Right. It was also um, right before our homecoming, our black homecoming that we started last year. Um, and it's, it was just a nice, it was the right time to stand in solidarity. Hannah Adams, a student at the University of Akron, explains her views on this controversial topic. So I saw that Colin Kaepernick was protesting the national anthem um, in the name of oppression in America. And I said, this man is singing my song. Like, I absolutely 100% agree with what it is that he's doing. He has a right to be doing this, a right to make this stance, which is great because he's on a national stage and people are noticing and people are talking about it. And he was on the cover of Time Magazine, like, as, as a second string quarterback. I really commend him um, for, for putting his neck out there um, and starting a conversation and continuing to facilitate a conversation that absolutely needs to take place. I wish I had known that our students this past weekend at homecoming were going to sit for the national anthem because I wish I had been there to participate myself. This movement has spread across the country to other NFL teams, to college teams, to high school teams, not to pit people against each other, but to try to bring everyone together. So I don't, I, I think everybody needs to start saying black lives matter and, and Hispanic lives matter and Asian lives matter. Like, because at some point, we're not gonna have to say them anymore. And at some point, we will be able to say all lives matter because we'll actually act like all lives matter. With all the social activism happening around the country, these students stood together in solidarity, practicing their First Amendment rights. This has been Jade Marshall from Lights, Camera, Akron. I'm really glad that you got their opinions and you got to talk to them. It's, it's really recent right now. It's in the news and it's very relevant. I'm really happy I got to speak with them as well. All right, this concludes this episode of Lights, Camera, Akron. But before we go, don't forget to check out LCA's social media pages listed at the bottom of this screen. You can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube page on ZTV LCA. For Lights, Camera, Akron, this has been Jay Marshall and Matt Barnhart. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.